Hey you all, Farmer Jesse here. Uh, Saturday night, I'm whooped. I'm sure you're whooped too, so let's just enjoy some interplanting talk for a minute. We have over, I, I think it's roughly 30 beds. I haven't counted exactly how many, we, but this year we've done something like 30 beds now, given 10 of those are garlic, and some of them are already gone, in and out. But we've done a lot of interplanting this year, and I wanna talk about some of the ones we're doing some of the ones that I really like, and some of the ones I have some question marks about. So, let's do it. All right, so the reason that I'm down here is this. This, is okra, red burgundy okra we've been saving seed on. Um, and it is planted into a bed of all of this right here. These are strawberries. These are strawberries with the paper. I talked about that mess earlier. But this right here was all crones. If you don't know what crones are, it's all right. It's a, it's a, sort of culinary treat. They look like, I don't know, they look kind of like maggots. So, but they taste delicious. They're Chinese artichoke is what they're often referred to as, but they kind of make this awesome ground cover and the soil, like the soil around them, you can see this, is really, well, weedy, but it's really beautiful. It's just like, I don't even, it smells like, I wish I could let you smell it. It smells like cinnamon. Uh, and so we planted those last year. We got them from our buddy uh, Evan Chender, the culinary gardener. Check him out on Instagram, he's awesome. We got them from, we got the crones from him and we dug some up last year. I gave some to some friends and ate some. But I thought it could make a really good perennial cover crop. So essentially we're just planting, we planted the crones, I mowed them down and then I planted that okra. So I don't know that that necessarily counts as a cover crop and a perennial, what the hell is this video about? I don't really know if this counts as, a, as an interplanting, but uh, I'll keep you all updated on that because I think it's kind of a cool, I really love the idea, right? I'm just trialing that. So I really love the idea of doing more um, perennial cover crops, trying to figure that out, because that could be really cool. Um, so one thing I want to say about this video is if you all have any cool interplantings, I want you to share them down below. And if you all have any cool perennial cover crop ideas, I want you to share those down below, because I'm really interested in that. I want to trial a bunch of that on the farm. And, um, and yeah, just kind of you know, figure that out a little bit because I think there's a lot of potential in there. Like I said, that soil is beautiful. I'd love to plant it. That's what I want all of my soil to look like. Um, so, that'd be great. That's what I'd like to do. So, we'll, if you all have any ideas for that, I have the greatest comment section on YouTube. I, you all are brilliant and you're always giving great advice. I get like the rare troll, but for the most part, I get the most awesome comments. So anyway, let's carry on with that tradition. Uh, this right here is kale. It's kind of spotty in spots, but you can see paper potted the green onions between the kale. I talked about this in another video, but as you can see it going down, just one line of green onions right there in the kale. Um, I've got some missing kale and it's also got a little purple on it. I've actually had some trouble growing kale in this deep compost mulch. I've supplemented it with some alfalfa meal and that seems to help, but um, yeah, I'm trying to figure that out. I think it's just the phosphorus issue with the excess of phosphorus in the compost. So I, I don't know exactly what's going on with that. I'm slowly figuring it out. It's one of the few crops that really doesn't respond well to this immediately. So we, I mean, we've got plenty of good kale off of it. We've got several, like three or four weeks of great harvests, but it's starting to purple a little earlier than I expected. So I don't know, I'll keep digging in on that. Um, this, Yellow squash, multi-pick. Uh, it's got some yellowing too, now that I look at it. I wonder what that's about. Anyway, this, so this yellow squash here, and two zucchini. 
snuck in there. Under, that's multi-pick, it's a really awesome yellow squash, but under, planted underneath that, I sowed carrots just, just the other day, so they're not up yet, but I sowed carrots and then just covered them with some compost mulch. Um, had it got it really clean and I'm just kind of trying to figure that out so another one here this one's hard to show you because it's already pretty much out but um, and there's a little bit of sorrel in here with it but it's carrots that I interplanted with radishes and I actually sowed the radishes in between the carrots um, I shouldn't have done that I kind of think I should have sowed the radishes right over top of the carrots so that I could cultivate the row in between the rows a little easier uh, but that worked out pretty well there's another line of green onions we're doing lots of green onions this year that's in between the potatoes um, and that seems to be going fine I mean the, the funny thing about interplanting is it's mostly turns out fine I rarely I, sometimes I run into issues where there's overcrowding and I'll talk about that at the garlic um, but for the most part like if you're responsible about it, it should be fine. Uh, some other interplantings here, we got celery interplanted with uh, a line of fennel. And I did all that on the gritter, so it's pretty evenly spaced at, at uh, eight inches, everything is eight inches, except, yeah, everything's at eight inches. Um, down here, this one's probably my craziest going right now, is paste tomatoes, this is Everbed. So paste tomatoes and flour and kale. Um, and the thing with the flour and kale is that I want to save seed on it. It should come out next week, and all of that paste tomatoes that we just transplanted yesterday, are, or the day before or something, all of them should be fine. And I apologize for the, any wind in this video. I'm trying to, to mitigate it a little bit with my body. Um, tomatoes, green onions on the south side, tomatoes, lettuce on both sides. You just see, these tomatoes look great. These are all outdoors. I'm just pruning the lower half of the tomatoes and then just letting them rock. Um, then we got peppers with lettuce and then some more peppers and lettuce and beets with some peppers up there. Uh, I'm not gonna show you every single bed because like I said, there's like 30 of them and that would be super boring. Um, but that's basically like, we're doing a lot of lettuce interplanting, a lot of green onion interplanting and some beet interplanting. Um, these two beds will get interplanted this week with beets and green onions. Um, and that's just peppers. That, they're mostly hot peppers, so they're a little shorter. So this is the one I, I think that most people are probably interested in. This is the garlic. Um, and as you can see, if you saw in the last video, maybe I can put a picture up, but the we had peas that were like up here, right? They were like way up to the top, and so, I just finally decided to just rip them out and use them as a mulch. I probably, I wanted to go as long as I could without doing that. I kind of wanted to see if I could get some peas off of it. And it just really didn't look like it was going to happen. So I ripped, so uh, Nate and I ripped all of these out and put them down as a mulch. And I wish I'd done it maybe a week or two earlier. But if I was, I'm gonna do this again, provided the bulbs turn out nice, and I think they will. I'm pulling scapes now. Uh, scapes look great. Pulling those now. I'm gonna pull the garlic soon. You can, let me just show you this mulch a little better. Um, and I did leave a little bit, and we'll just look at this. I left a little bit just to see what would happen with the peas. And if you just left them, what would happen? And they basically just like clobber the garlic. So you can see that's just the peas, I left them. At this point, I'm kind of in it for the long run. I just want to get some peas out of it. But um, yeah, we just kind of left that and we're just gonna roll with it. Uh, you know, we'll lose a little garlic there, but um, I don't know, now I want some peas. I just want to taste these Austrian winter peas. I don't know, I really want to save seed on them, <laughs> but I don't think I'm going to be able to. The last thing I'm going to show you is just the tunnels. There's not, I don't have a lot of interplanting going on in the tunnels at the moment, but there is one that I think is kind of working out pretty well. And uh, basically it's, hi Bob, hold on just a second. I'm almost done. So the one that's worked out pretty well is this red romaine and it started to bolt. This is the little gem. It started to bolt, but what I've been doing is cutting it as it bolts, and it is delicious. One, 
it makes, I, if you know any chefs that want like the most amazing poultice, these little guys. Um, but this stuff is delicious. This is the red romaine, the little gems that you get from Johnny's. Um, and I have that up against the cucumbers and lettuce against the cucumbers. And our cucumbers are kind of funky because several of them died. So we had to reline them. So it's gonna be a little bit of a succession. Um, but that's, that's actually not the interplanting I wanted to talk about. The interplanting I wanted to talk about is the nasturtiums. And I'll talk about this more in detail later, but we put nasturtiums in between some of the cucumbers. And the reason being that they, um, we've noticed that they reduce tremendously, they did last year at least, uh, they reduce tremendously the cucumber beetle presence. So that is something we are really interested in. And it seems, I haven't seen a single cucumber beetle in here yet. So at least not this year. Um, and the first year we did this, uh, without the nasturtiums, these things got nailed. So, um, yeah, I mean, never again on that. This all looks crazy. There's, it's actually cleaner than it looks. There's um, some green onions in here that we are still just picking out. And this mass right here, let me get you a shot of these cucumbers and stuff first. Um, so these, Right here, this is all watermelon radish. I may have talked about this already, but we had some watermelon radishes bolt, and they all, all bolted, and I really don't want them to. I want to save watermelon radishes that can handle a little bit more cold. So I waited until a few of them totally bulbed up. You know, there's a big watermelon radish, and then started to produce seed. So I'm just gonna save seed on these and um, they're interplanted with some more our early winter or our early yellow squash. So that's again, that's multi-pick, but we have those radishes that are just flowering and I'm gonna save seed on them. Um, yeah, right there next to the winter, to the yellow squash, cause why the heck not? Um, and you know, I mentioned that like most interplantings work out and they really do. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that this be the way that everybody goes about that. This is just something I enjoy. Like I think that you should farm the way that you want to farm and make it work for you on a scale that um, can, I don't know, make you money. Like can be profitable enough for you to get by. And uh, we're still working on that. You know, it's still a work in progress, but I don't think, like at the moment I'm enjoying playing. I'm enjoying trying to fit basically an acre of food into three quarters of an acre and having lettuce just in the greenhouse ready to go in wherever I have a spot or beets or green onions or whatever it may be. Um, and I just enjoy farming like that. It fits my personality better or something. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like everything doesn't have to be perfect spacing, all that stuff all the time. I just think like sometimes if you want to try something for the most part, and I don't want to get anybody in trouble with their gardens or their family or whatever, but, um, it just works more often than you think it will. And uh, just having that confidence and taking that leap and trying it a few times, I, I don't see any problem with that. Um, you know, don't go crazy. I do 30 beds right now. Uh, that's maybe a little crazy, but you know, you don't have to do that. Anyway, like this video if you like this video. I'm super tired. Uh, I'm gonna go drink a beer. And uh, you all, I got market again in the morning. So otherwise you all, thank you for watching. We'll see you next week. Uh, last episode of the podcast this week for the season, and then we'll be back in September. So make sure to check that out. All right, bye. Hi. What are you doing? I'm flying the kite. Oh.